So in just a minute, you are going to see my sit down interview with Leah Hextall, the broadcaster. She became the first woman to call a nationally televised NHL game last year, just before the pandemic hit. So that was really cool. We had a great talk about her career so far, her favorite games and what's next for her. Check it out. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today, Leah. This is really awesome. We're trying to get some more female voices on the show because it's very male centric. So, and you're you're a great person to talk to, and you're also uh, you're also from Central Canada as well. So that that works with the uh, the Saskatchewan viewers. They have a lot of uh, Manitoba viewers, so and listeners. So, yes, I'm things. actually in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which Rachel is the geographical center of North America. It even really? says so on our signs. Yes, actually, we're very proud of it. Apparently, here in Manitoba. <laughs> That's really cool, actually. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, there you go. A little history lesson for you. So I guess just tell um, tell the viewers about your career. Like, how did you get to this point doing play-by-play for, you know, obviously you've done some NHL and then you did some NCAA. How did you get to this point? So it's it's a bit of a long story. So I'll just really try to put it down to the interesting part. So let's start there. Um, you know, I started back in 2003 and I was lucky and fortunate enough to get a job at my hometown station, CKX Television and their sports department right out of school, which I look back now and it was such a gift to get that opportunity. From there, I bounced into Winnipeg at CTV, worked there for a lot of years and, you know, and continued to climb up the ladder. And then I got a big break in Boston at Nesson. And that really changed the scope of my career because for the next two years, all of a sudden you're covering the World Series champions, the Boston, you know, Red Sox, and you're covering Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. And when you're on that type of stage, suddenly people start to pay attention to you. And that led me to a job offer from Sportsnet when they received the NHL rights and that historic 12-year deal for $5.2 billion and brought in the Hockey Night Canada brand. And when I walked through the doors at CKX, that was the goal, to work for Hockey Night in Canada. So even though Boston was incredible, Mm -hmm. I decided to come back to Canada and moved to Toronto to work for them. But two years after we started, massive layoffs, and I was one of them. And then after that, uh, you know, I just, frankly, I couldn't get a job. I couldn't get a job in the industry after, you know, 13 years and getting to national and being on hockey night in Canada and all this experience behind me. I just couldn't get a job again. The people I was losing out to were often younger And at that time, I was in my late 30s. And they also were less experienced, which means you didn't have to pay them as much. And that's just economic. And that's when the idea of calling play-by-play came into my mind. And it was something I had always wanted to try and briefly tried at Sportsnet. But because I was so busy doing everything else, I didn't have the time to practice. I didn't have the time to do it. And, you know, there weren't really any opportunities anyways. But during that time, that's when I started putting the feelers out. And I started, first person I told was my agent. I said, what about play by play? I'm a broadcaster that has a certain amount of history behind myself and there's no women doing it. And I really looked at it as there's an opportunity here if I'm willing to put in the work and it was going to be a lot of work and it has been a lot of work. And, you know, from there, it was just simply, you know, as I mentioned, putting the feelers out, reach back out to the same gentleman who laid me off at Sportsnet and told them that this is what I'd like to do. And they had the Canadian Women's Hockey League package at the time. And they gave me the opportunity to call play by play. We're going to take a quick break now, but don't go anywhere. More with Leah coming up after the break. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it, like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street in viewer showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. (laughs) 
how do you kind of stay focused when there's no work? And I, that, I have another question sort of related to that, like obviously trying to call games during a pandemic, just what was that like? In addition to not work, not calling games for a while, then I'm assuming you're calling games remotely as well. What was that like? Yeah, so we, I've been very fortunate because I've been able to be in the ranks when I've called during the pandemic. When we were in Fargo in North Dakota, they were open up enough that there was even some fans at the game. They had 25% capacity. So it felt a little different because obviously there was the testing and you're wearing masks and your color person is down the hallway from you instead of right beside you, basically. So you can see them, but they're, you know, quite far away. So you kind of miss that camaraderie. Um, But that game felt fairly normal it wasn't that bad but I just called the PWHPA Dream Gap Tour Mm -hmm. in Calgary with Cassie and that was at the Saddle Dome and it was completely empty it's a you know obviously an NHL rink Mm -hmm. and you don't you know we didn't even see our producer once they're on site but nobody's allowed to see each other you're not allowed to connect with the players so it's very different than what it was prior to that so that was my first experience without a crowd and I have to say Rachel I, I hated it you know like I loved the call of the game but you realize how important and I I know this probably sounds silly but how important the crowd is Mm -hmm. I mean I can't imagine what the players have felt like not playing in front of fans for so long in Canada this year in the NHL because I know just from a play call you ride the waves of the energy from the crowd you know if there's a breakaway people start to crescendo so you start to crescendo they're almost a bit of a guide for you so I found that I really had to almost work myself up a bit to get my call a little bit higher because if not it's almost like you're calling the game off of a television in your living room because there's no of that game atmosphere so Um, I have to say, it's interesting because Cassie and I, when we called our NHL game, um, it was Calgary and Vegas. And it was the last game Calgary had with fans before the world shut down. And then we called these games for the PWHPA. And they had said, you guys called our last game with fans. And this will be our last game without fans. So that's an exciting thing going forward. It's a, you know, little trivia question there. But I can't wait for fans to get back in the stands yeah. because uh, it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, I just, I mean, just relating to that on a personal level, like obviously I haven't called them at a level like you, but I just remember when I was doing games at Western uh, in London, Ontario, and normally they don't get fans for the hockey games just for football, um, but they had a lot of school day games. So we'd have the kids and they'd come in at 11 and the amount like the difference in terms of like levels because it's packed and you have all these mm-hmm. kids and they're all screaming and it's so loud you can't even hear yourself think but you it's also better than the games normally when it's like a few parents and it, it wasn't really good but when you have the kids it's like you really feed off that energy and it was hard because they're loud and as I said it's hard to hear yourself think but it was so much better and I think the players liked it liked it way better too. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and it, it's just, I couldn't believe the difference. And so I'm, I'm actually really happy I received that experience because it teaches you something. I hope we never have to experience this again ever in my lifetime, but it, it is something. And, and now I know the difference between having the crowd and not having the crowd when I'm calling a game. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This has really been a lot of fun. And I think the viewers will really get a lot out of this. No problem, Rachel. I really appreciate you having me on. This has been great. Thank you so much to Leah Hextall for joining me. I really learned a lot from her. Her experience has really been invaluable. And don't forget to stick around because the main show with Rod and Darren is coming up next. Vegas Golden Knights vanquish the Montreal Canadiens. They thrashed them. How about that? Carey Price went into God mode again, but it wasn't enough. They're not good enough. I'm sorry. They're playing the number one team in the National Hockey League. That's the Vegas Golden Knights. Montreal's what, 16th? There is room on the Vegas Golden Knights train, and we're not taking you to the train station. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Good one, guys. Good one. (laughs) Welcome to the RP Show. 
Don't mind me. We got a heck of a lot done here, Darren. A lot in our morning meeting. Did we ever? But the one thing that I did not get done was sending out the tweet to the world of how they can watch and listen to the show here right now. So, how you doing? I'm I'm great. I'm That's great. good. Yeah, no, the morning meetings. I don't know what's up with them, but they're getting better. They, they started. They've ramped up. <laughs> I don't know if it's not that we've ever had a lack of positivity or excitement around here. But uh, partly CFL related, partly oh, yeah. sunshine, warm weather, but all kinds of things, planning, all that kind of stuff. <sighs> Tweeted. Good. Uh, we are not on Game Plus TV this week, so I had to tell the world that uh, you can watch us on YouTube, Facebook Live, or listen live at rodpeterson.com slash listen live. It's a 24-hour sports radio loop, okay? I feel like we need to just shake people into reality on that if you ever want to listen to the show live well sorry on a loop it's just like howard stern but digitally go to rodpeterson.com slash listen live anyways how about that how about that how about that we've lit a few fires today didn't mean to don't say we (laughs) (laughs) i did nothing of the kind uh yeah just getting my cord ready here um Coming up on the program today, uh, Leader Post, Saskatchewan Rough Riders beat writer Murray McCormick to talk a little CFL green and white. Darren Bombing from Winnipeg, a uh, reporter out there from Winnipeg, covers the Bombers. He's also with NHL.com. And then a late ad, Rod Black here. He'll be joining us in hour one, and who, who he does not need any introduction. Blackie. Yeah, but he was a late ad. I don't even have him in my notes here. So that is coming up. And one of the bombs that I dropped was simply the poll question today. Let's get that out of the way first for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. We are, what, six weeks away from the start of the CFL season. TSN has not yet named their lead play-by-play guy because Chris Cuthbert jumped over to Sportsnet. Remember that? Yeah. Pre-pandemic times, or was it during pandemic times? I don't know. I'm completely lost time-wise, but Cuthbert's gone. So the four options that we came up with here, just off the top of our heads, and, and, and already we're getting blasted for that. I got Rod Black, Gord Miller, Rod Smith, or Farhan Lalji. And running away with it right now is 240 Gordy, Gord Miller. And I'm not sure Gord even wants it, <laughs> okay? Uh who it's James uh, Jermaine Franklin came on here and said he'd like to do it. Remember that? Mm-hmm. James Duthie came on this show. He said he'd like to do it. And then I got people writing me. Evan Dom, the PR guy and brand guy for God's team, the Regina Pats, he's writing and saying, what about Dustin Nielsen? He's already the third guy. I wrote him back and said, there's only four options. Rod Black, Gord Miller, Rod Smith, Farhan Lalji. I've left off Jermaine Franklin. James Duffy, Dustin Nielsen, and these guys are all in-house. Right. <laughs> we didn't even bring in a single name from out of house. Right. So people are really going wild with that. Jeff, the Stampeders fan, chimes in. Didn't, didn't take him long. He says, look for a female in that group, Rod. Sure, why not? Why not? I, did, I, don't, I only put four names up, and I'm just getting nailed to the cross, as usual. I don't think there's one that's done football for TSN yet, is there? I don't think I have no they've idea. Put one, had, a, had a female call games yet. But if there was, I'm trying to think of who would be the most qualified. Um, but that's interesting, too, to see if, if there's a female name that steps up, much like Leah Hextall is doing in the NHL and others calling games, if that'll translate to Canadian football. That'd be interesting. And then, just before the quick six, I didn't even know, but I guess they were talking about us on Calgary Sports Radio yesterday, Fan 960. And uh, over to you, Moose, because I didn't even know this until you informed me this in the morning meeting. Well, Bull was on, right, of course. So your, your name obviously comes up whenever that happens. I don't think, you know, this came from, from our, our sales manager, Jim. He was listening to the radio and, and gave me the call. And he's like, they're talking about you. They won't mention your show by name. They just said a little bit to the east, but... Uh, but they were talking. But then about my you. name came up. Yeah, I think they they did mention the show. Uh, it was mo- It wasn't really about you. I don't think it was mostly about Charleston being on. And uh, I think Bo alluded to uh, Calgary whiffing on that one. I don't know. I didn't listen to the clip, but uh, 
along the lines of, you know, we yeah, we caught him. We thought he was at the end, and then he goes and leads the league in sacks for three straight years. That's what Bo said. Yeah. Um, just on that, so many people, mutual friends, okay, of Bo are saying to me, can you guys just make up? You got to make up. Chucky said it yesterday. Ben Hebert has said that. And um, apparently he's, he's ready to. But I said, it's good, for, it's good for business. I don't really care. And you know if I'm getting it, he's getting it too, right? Mm-hmm. Bo's getting it too. Oh, yeah. So, and then as our sales manager in Calgary, Jim, said, can Rod just get over it with Calgary? And what did I say? I'm not the one with a problem. Calgary is. I'm ready to get over it when they're ready to get over it. Well, what do you tell me, Rod? What is your role in this? I don't know. Examine your role in the situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Quick six show topics, please, Jordan. Thank you. And I didn't even bring up the podcast that I was on in Those Calgary. were the real bombs. Those were the real bombs that I dropped, in which the interview, by the way, was last week. It just got posted this morning and whatever. Number one. And this is the warm-up, by the way, brought to you by E-Cold Electric, your complete electrical distributor with locations in Regina, Esteban, Swift Current, Yorkton, and Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. E-Cold Electric, let's get to work. Right after coffee. Tampa Bay 4, New York Islanders 2 last night. And a complete abomination of officiating last night. Um, I used to really dislike referees. And it was really mutual. Did I ever tell you the story about the night in Bonzini's when one ref had to pull another ref off of me? (laughs) It came at me. Just to give you an idea how it used to be. I remember sitting at a parking lot, Shoppers Drug Mart on 8th Street in Saskatoon, and Mike Hassenfratz. You don't remember Hassie, do you? Old WHL, he went to the uh, NHL. Lives in Nashville now. Anybody who knows Hassie would remember this, what he's like. He's like, Yeah, the guys are tired of you roasting them. You're going to have a problem if you don't stop roasting all the other referees. And I said, tell them to be better. (laughs) How'd that go over? I'm over it with referees now for the most part. But last night, they really crapped themselves. The goaltender interference penalty on Braden Point and then six skaters on the ice for Tampa when they scored the game-winning goal. And God love Craig Button, dear family friend, but he said, ah, the team should just get over it because they evened out. (laughs) I was like, you can't honestly believe that, Craig. Obviously, that's just what you say to allow the coaches to get to sleep at night because they're so mad. But that doesn't fix the problem that I can get the officials miss things. We all make mistakes, obviously. I've made five today. I'm okay with that. But when you've got video replay, particularly on a goal, and I've seen now where a goal will be scored and they'll rewind the tape a minute and a half to an infraction that happened earlier, a minute and a half before the goal and, and nullify the goal for the because there was a hook, whatever. Yeah. And you got six skaters on the ice and you don't nullify the game-winning goal. Shame on the NHL for that. And that's why I fear that officiating in hockey and actually football too will never be fixed. Never. Because they're blowing it on with the benefit of review. And if you count the guy who was at the bench about to get on, like get off the ice. Seven. seven. <laughs> exactly. Like, and I'm very much in the pool, and I don't I don't talk about the referees. I kind of despise I despise criticizing the referees. I really don't like it. Mm-hmm. And I don't like talking about it. I'm in the I'm a thousand percent into the side of the officials don't impact the game. They don't. I think the players do. I think you need to overcome bad calls. That's part of it. But last night did it was kind of momentum changing. It was a two nothing game, and Braden Point gets cross checked into the goaltender and gets the penalty. That changed the momentum of the game. And so yeah, you, you know the hockey gods kind of even things out, but. All of a sudden, the Islanders had life, and then they started playing well, and they were kind of dictating the game for a little bit. And then the goal happens. Palat scores the goal with seven skaters on the ice and made it 3-1. And that completely derailed the game, and it never came back from there. 
it, it, Tampa just tilted it, and it was all the way. Um, it was over. So they did impact the game in a, in a big, big way last night. It was tough. And for those saying, you know, that the too many men didn't matter, didn't impact the goal, how do you know? you got six guys to cover. How do you choose who to go after, where you go? You're worried about different things. It's a penalty. It's still a penalty. Like, and it was pretty obvious. So it wasn't a good night for NHL officials. That's just uh, pointing that out. Um, Costa Marigas checking in in real time with Costa Marigas. Morning, team. Thank you, Costa. Good morning to you. And I'll be on his show this week talking CFL. The return of the CFL. Point two, Montreal at the Vegas Golden Knights tonight, 7 p.m. Mountain. I haven't put much thought into the game tonight. I'll get the usual text from my brother for game predictions of a score. He nailed the 4-1 final. Wow. My brother did. I said 5-1 the other night, and I was yeah. just praying for an empty netter to be right and beat my brother, and it didn't happen. They tried. Oh, yes, yeah, like they even, kept trying. Even yes. Marc-Andre <laughs> tried. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but my brother nailed it. I'll be interested to see what his take is tonight on our Golden Knights, Canada's team, looking to go up 2-0 on the beaten-up, injury-riddled, Montreal Canadiens. Point three, the Yankees beat the uh, Blue Jays last night 6-5. The Jays blow another save. I think it's six blown saves in the last 30 days. And people are getting restless. It's June 16th. Did you see Charlie Montoya after the game? I don't know if you did. Oh, He's yeah, like, I'm defending sti- it. sticking with our guys. He's like, it seems I like, like every month. <laughs> right. We got to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they keep blowing the game. I do appreciate that. I love that Charlie Montoya is back in his guys because guess what? What's criticizing them going to do? Right? You know, behind closed doors, you're working with me like you got to be better. Mm-hmm. But it's not like you're going to sit there and blast them and bring somebody else in because you got nobody else. So until a trade's made or somebody's brought in or a move's made, you're, hey, what do they say dance with the girl that you brought, right? And that's what he's doing. And that's what he's doing. And that will go a heck of a long ways in his clubhouse. Big time. So, but what I do enjoy from a Blue Jays perspective, the good news is people are so ramped up about the Blue Jays. I mean, for the younger people that don't know, we went 20 years without caring or really in Western Canada, really paying attention on a game-in, game-out basis. And Canada is dialed in on the Blue Jays. And that's the good news. Point four, CFL stuff. We should really get out that Chris Larson, the Ottawa Red Blacks player that was accused in that... I'm just going to use the term gay bashing. I hope that I don't... That's not wrong to say that, I think. The incident? That's pretty I don't fair. think. That's what we used to call it. I, I don't know that what the term is now, but he's been cleared. They said at worst, he was a witness, but he's no longer a suspect. So let's get that out there for Chris Larson. I don't think this story's over yet, but I I think it's his lawyer, and even he has mentioned he feels somewhat vindicated in that. Uh, Leftovers from the Charleston Hughes interview yesterday because he dropped so many bombs. It was, (laughs) we're sitting and picking up the pieces afterwards. Says the Argos are, are not buying a Grey Cup. Um, I'm interested to see when they come out of training camp who they keep. Are they over the salary cap? It's the way Murph does business. Signs everybody and then just tosses them overboard when they week one comes. Hey, there's plenty of intrigue, though. He's going to have a lot of eyes on training camp. That'll be the training camp to watch in the Canadian Football League. And you look at a couple of three pieces for me. Bishop Sankey at running back. Kendall Wright at receiver. Both former Titans. That's not why. And Martavis Bryant. Right. Three NFL cast offs. And we always wonder how they will do in Canada. Well, those are the three three guys. Can they come in and have success and get their football careers back on track? That'll be very interesting in Toronto. So do I think all three, you know, end up on on day one, you know, the roster on August 5th? I don't know. Probably not. But it'll be a lot of uh, a lot of interesting uh, discussion from now until Mark Davis Bryant's name came up. Yesterday, and last I heard, he was playing in the Indoor Football League. So I don't know if he's going to be back with the Argos or not in time, potentially. By the way, I see more people upset. Looking at our poll here for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, who should be the CFL on TSN's number one play-by-play man? Rod Black, Gord Miller, Rod Smith, Farhan Lalji. And people are getting really upset that Dustin Nielsen was not included in the poll. Can I say this? How about seniority? All those gentlemen have been there longer. Maybe this is only side one of the bracket. Yeah, exactly. Do I really need to explain myself? Maybe we'll go to... Uh, to that degree? Bracket two. Point five, because we're running out of time on the warm-up here for E. Cold Electric. Ooh, 
Ooh, I was happy to see this yesterday. The Western Hockey League had their annual general uh, meeting yesterday, and they said that they are planning to start October 1st this fall for their 2021-22 season. They expect a 68-game season, and they expect full arenas. There's not much more to be said about that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Really, really awesome. Can't wait. And uh, point six, soccer stuff. Apparently, there's a lot going on. It's a little like curling to me in that it just, it's a tidal wave of soccer going on. You got the Euro thing, and I guess Canada, they shellac Haiti. I saw the highlights last night. That had to be the missed play of the day. The missed play of the day, the Haiti goalie. Did you Ooh, see it? I did. And I know Canada, by all accounts, was playing pretty well. I didn't watch the game, but they were playing really well. So they deserved to win. But that's tough. The goalie missed it, and then he went to kick it out, and he accidentally kicked it with the wrong foot into his own net and whiffed. And that's, that's one of the worst own goals I've ever seen, if not the worst. Really, really tough. Uh, yeah. Um, Troy Durrell says TSN should bring in Mark Lee for a play-by-play. Loved him when he did the CFL on CBC. Uh, Jeff Stamps says seniority be damned. TSN needs new blood for CFL broadcasts. I don't have an opinion, won't have an opinion, but you're welcome to yours. That's what we do here at the RP Show. And this has been the warm-up for E-Cold Electric. Rod Black joins us next. On the way, Darren Bombing from CFL 360 and uh, NHL.com and uh, Murray McCormick. You're watching the RP Show. No game plus this week because of Blast Premiere. But we are live on YouTube and Facebook and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop, staffed by PGA of Canada professionals, is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. In today's fast-paced world, we know you don't always have time to cook a nutritious meal. The Mad Greek and Moose Jaws got you covered with delicious takeout and delivery specials, even for large groups or occasions. Authentic Greek cuisine, pizza, ribs, and more. There's something for everyone to enjoy. Offering licensed dining, delivery, and their takeout window is open to get your Greek to go. For more information and to view the online menu, visit themadgreekeatery.com. Capital is Regina's trusted Ford Lincoln dealership. Whether you're on the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle, we got you covered. And when it's time for service work, you can trust our factory trained technicians who specialize in repairing any make or model. But don't take our word for it. Check out CapitalFordLincoln.com to see how we roll and to learn about what other customers are saying about working with us. Your dealership experience should be fun, easy, and transparent. And that's what you get when you choose Capital Ford Lincoln, Regina's trusted Ford Lincoln dealership. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. 
Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. It is. Welcome back, everybody, to the RP Show. And listen, our poll question today pertains to who should be the next number one play-by-play man on TSN. Can you do me a favor and figure out the difference between play-by-play and color before we go any further? I was going to say. Come on. Are you kidding me? You're sports fans, you think, and you don't know the difference between the play-by-play role and the color commentary role? The former players. Are right. the color people. The former coaches, they're the colors. They're the analyst, right? They provide all the analysis of the play. The play-by-play guy describes the play. He's the lead. Typically not a former player. Doesn't mean he couldn't be, but typically Henry Burris and Glenn Suter and those guys, those are the analysts on the show. I, 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 oh, that I, was, I, I can't believe in 2021 we're having this discussion. We're back to square one. And I love you people. But somebody mentioned Henry Burris is the number one play-by-play guy on CFL. There's so many things wrong with that, not the least of which is that he's a coach with the Chicago Bears right now. (laughs) Educate yourself. Can we bring in Rod Black, please? (laughs) Clark's like, yep. Get Rod Black on the screen. What are you? Hello, boys. You got your hair cut? Salon's open out there? Somewhat. 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 <laughs> How you doing? You're very color coded and you look great. What are you rocking today? I should, be ready. I should be ready to play some golf is what I should be able to do. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm yeah. not today. No, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, color coordinate. I don't know what color. Yeah. P- please, it's not Argo colors. Okay. We p- people always say, "Oh, you're wearing a certain color. You must be cheering for that certain team." We don't cheer yeah. for anybody. I'm trying to dupes. What color is that? That black and blue. That's like almost Carolina Panthers comes yeah. to mind now yeah. when I say that. But Carolina <laughs> yeah. Panthers. That's it. Perhaps. There you go. Here you go. Tampa Bay Lightning, perhaps. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Roderick, how did Hello. you feel? How did you feel about you? The, the CFL news? The unanimous vote. Oh and man. It's... You know, I think last time we talked, we we said we we're going to talk. Hopefully when the season was going to open. So here we are. Um, I'm jacked. I'm juiced. Uh, I'm jabbed. I'm vaccinated. Now that, that helps too. <laughs> so uh, I think everybody's excited. I think it's great for Canada. It's great for the sports fan in Canada. Uh, it, it shows another sign that we're starting to get back to normal somewhat. I know, I know there still are concerns and safety precautions and everybody out there has to be uh, obviously aware that we're still not out of this yet, but man, I, I don't know about you guys. I mean, I, I've really missed Canadian football, especially after losing it all of last year. And we had a real concern, you guys, that if we didn't see it this year, you know, what was the future? So, hey, it's all great news. I'm sure you're hearing it from the fans. Uh, I know it's only a 14-game schedule. I know this, and I know the Great Cup's going to be in December. Who cares? Something is better than nothing. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, the, the, the players have agreed to 19 or more amendments to the CBA. Like, everybody just wants to play. But as I look over your shoulder, are you at home, Rod? Yeah, yeah. I, the Argo helmet Uh-oh. over your shoulder is going to bring about – there must have some significance to you, but people are going to say, oh, he's an Argo fan. I knew uh, it. No, no, I'm not. Here we go. Here, I, I, there's a Ticat helmet over there, too. I got uh, every helmet. Oh, I got yeah. a rider helmet here, too, somewhere, yeah. Yeah, don't see yeah, No, here, I'll just, <laughs> here, just in case you, it's the, the air. That, no, that is the, uh, that is, uh, I don't even know why I got that. You know, honestly, I get a lot of uh, stuff and I don't keep a lot of stuff. I really don't. And so what happens is I end up giving it to an auction and I just probably don't think that I, I gave that one away. So cool. anyway, I yeah. have lots of, look at, hey, 
Well, yeah, there you are. You're, what do you what do you got in front of you there? You got a UC helmet. You got a well, you got a Canada face mask, mask, which is great. Got Vladdy yeah. here. How about that? Did you? Oh yeah, oh Vladdy. So you got you got to represent everything. I think I got everything in here. So got try to get represent every sport. I mean it, it. It goes to show you that we have we have absolutely no life. Oh, I know. But you you were you were starting to say something. You said, "How about that something?" What were you getting to? Um, you know, I was, I was, I, I guess, you know, I, I, I think there were a lot of people that were really concerned last year and there was a lot of heat on the commissioner of the Canadian football league on the CFLPA. Uh, I, I, I think I'm really proud of the owners and everybody trying to find a way. I mean, it could have been very easy that they could have probably just shut down, but it was, you know, maybe no news on the background was good news. The way it came out this way, I, I always kind of felt that it was going to happen. We just had to wait until we could probably see more vaccinations, Rod, um, so we can see fans in the stands. Uh, and we probably had to see that, you know, maybe this, you know, the, the numbers are going to drop seriously and they're starting to drop seriously across the country. So it's all good news. All yeah, absolutely. So when you get in the booth, I got to ask your thoughts on this. We had Charleston Hughes sitting in that chair right here yesterday. He plays for Toronto. Right there. Like, there you go, right there. Yeah, we're there. there, yeah. there. But hey, there, it's, there, there. it's musical chairs, Rod. Like, your depth charts are going to be – you can't oh, use any from the last time dude, these guys played. Dude, yeah. I, I was – yeah, everything changes. Uh, it is unique. It's unlike it's ever been before. The, you know, I, I think I remember there was a time when the quarterbacks all changed in the league and then, but it was only the quarterbacks. I mean, there are players that have shifted so much during free agency uh, and trades. Uh, the team here in Toronto where I am, uh, man, they made some serious changes. Pinball Clemens has, has made some significant moves. Uh, I, I think Saskatchewan, the, the Dion Lacey move was, was huge. I mean, losing some players that, that, you know, the Rough Riders lost, but they're still, in my mind, one of the powerhouses out west. I, my thing is, like, people are asking me, like, who do you think? I mean, clearly, the, you know, you go back, you, you can't even go back a year and a half ago, Rod, to say, well, you know, Winnipeg, Hamilton, or Saskatchewan and Hamilton, or, you know, you, you can't. You, it, it, anything could happen, I suppose, in a 14-game schedule. And the powers have shifted, but I do still think the powers at B are, are you know, certainly still in Hamilton and Winnipeg and Saskatchewan and, and and likely, you know, probably with the Argos who have, have really, I don't even want to say reloaded. They, they, they loaded up. So we'll see the, here's the thing, no preseason games, which may be good for some people. They're going to shake off some rust for a few weeks. You better get off to a good start. Well, I don't know how much thought you've put into this. I've been thinking about it just now. Ryan Dinwiddie's maiden voyage, guiding the Argos, mm. Paul Lapalise mm. in Ottawa, Rick Campbell mm. in BC, and these are just mm. the coach. Some mm. delicious stories. Right, in Edmonton. Yeah. You love that kind of stuff, the storylines. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that's the thing, it, and it, there's a beauty to it. I, I actually saw Lapo recently uh, um, and it, during a sad occasion during Chris Schultz's uh, memorial. Uh, you know, losing Schultz uh, over the last few months really was a sad, uh, sad news to all of us, all the Canadian football fans. But had a really good long chat with uh, Lapo that day and how much he was loving Ottawa and, and looking forward, you know, to rekindling uh, his relationship with Matt Nichols again. And you saw what happened with Nichols and, and, and Nick Arbuckle, who um, basically it was a free agency trade. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, free trade, I guess you could say. Uh, it was so. It was. It was such a bizarre off season. You just never knew who was going to go where and who was going to do what. And I still think, hey, they're you know, I don't know how the rosters are going to be cut down or pared down or what happens, but there are going to be some seriously talented football players who be, could become available before August fifth. That also could switch teams before then. But you're right. I love the storylines with the coaches and. And uh, the good guy coaches in the league, too. You know, the, you, all those guys that you mentioned are such good guy coaches, um, like the guy that you have in Regina, who is a great guy. And, 
We shall see. I mean, I, I'm just, I, you can see I'm a little giddy because I, I'm, I'm excited to get back at it. I wish we could get back at it tomorrow. Well, you were in the league long before I was. I mean, Kahari Jones, super dude. Orlando Steinauer, oh. super dude. O'Shea, yep. if you get to know him, super dude. If you don't, super guy. Eh, yeah, it looks like you, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Good but you fish just... with. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, yeah, your, your relationships, that's one thing about the CFL, Rod, you know this. Everybody who covers this league knows this. The relationships that you really build. You see, I'm sure you had it with Charleston in your studio yeah. the other day. The players in this league are just good, good people for the most part. And they want to do good work in the community. And generally, they live in your community afterwards. And, and that goes to the coaches, too. And you're right. We, you know, we've, hey, we, we have, there have been some um, bad actors in our league in many ways. There have been some jerks in the league. There have been some jerk coaches in the league, too. Guess what? They don't last long generally. So um, the good guy Canadian Football League is uh, ready to launch again. Yes, you nailed it. You nailed it. I could talk to you about this stuff forever. But the, the one thing oh, is yeah. why I hate when coaches get fired in any league is that they're, they're good coaches. They got hired for a reason, and they are people too. Mark Trestman and I talked about mm -hmm. that, like how much it hurt him mm. when he got fired by the Bears. Like he's a great coach, yep. right? Yeah, and, great coach, great person, by the way. Yes. Just, like unique, kind of quirky. Obviously, like, I mean, if people yeah. could say that professorial, like, you know, they say that Mark Tressman's a fascinating, fascinating guy. Um, yes. And and one of the most successful coaches, uh, dare I say that, you know, likely could be in the, the Hall of Fame uh, yeah. as well uh, but, for what he has done. Right. But the, the fans don't see that. Right. And that's the no. best part when you can get a peek behind the curtain in whatever documentary mm -hmm. you do or whatever. Hey, I just wanted to chat with you about the playoffs in the association. I've been watching casually mm -hmm. Canada's team, not in them anymore, but holy smokes, two games tonight. That series are two, two Kawhi's out tonight. How much are you enjoying the NBA playoffs? No, oh, I love it. I, you know, I, I it's it, unique because I think I chatted with you a couple of years ago and the Raptors had won the NBA championship and I was pivoting the next day to go to a, a CFL opener in Edmonton that night. And I think I didn't get any sleep doing that game. So scrambling that, and that was the last opener that I did on time. So now we're looking forward to August 5th. So now I got a little time to be a, a fan and watch uh, the NBA. I, I feel bad for Kawhi Leonard and the, and the Clippers, uh, because of that injury. That dunk the other night, by the way, might have been the all-time greatest NBA playoff dunk I've ever seen. And it just goes to show you the kind of player he is. But it's a bizarre postseason, Rod. It's bizarre in, in hockey. It, it, it's been bizarre in basketball for sure. Uh, you know, the teams that play team defense and grind it out seem to win. You, you don't know how to predict. I'd hate to be a Las Vegas odds maker. Chris Paul, you know, now being part of that protocol uh, platform that they have will could miss some games in the Western finals, which is so sad for the NBA fan, but you know, the Clippers are going to miss Kawhi Leonard without Kawhi Leonard. They, they, they may not be able to advance. And then last night you saw what happened as well. When, you know, you can't finish the Milwaukee bucks for whatever reason, this team cannot finish big games and the Brooklyn nets who I still think have the, what would you call him? The MUP, most unstoppable player. And Kevin Durant just seemed to turn it up. And yeah, they're the dream team, but they've been hurt too. So any of the teams that are left now, honestly, in my mind, could win the championship. My money, my betting money probably would be on the Nets right now because I think they are getting healthier and, and they are so, so damn good. So well, damn good. The Phoenix Sun story is, Phoenix Sun story, by the way, is spectacular. And, yes, and Chris is. Paul, Chris Paul doing what he's doing. Uh, he's a future Hall of Famer. Uh, I don't think anybody saw the Phoenix Suns before this season began advancing to the NBA Finals. There's a very good chance they could. Why would you see them advance? They never do. Not since Steve Nash was a player. But the, the feeling of hopelessness in the Valley of the Sun was just... I felt so bad for oh, them. Yeah. So for they come around, but speaking of Nash, and I'll end on this, what a wonderful storyline for Canadians to pull for. Like the Nets, everybody hates them. I get it. I like that. I <laughs> yeah. like Harden, Durant, what they're doing there, Kyrie. But Steve Nash, man, like, there's the team you want to cheer for. Yeah, you, you, if you can't cheer for Steve Nash, if you don't like Steve Nash, you, you don't like basketball and you don't like Canada <laughs> basketball. And, you know, he, he's his story is just so unique. And for, you know, I, I was talking to my kids the other day about the first chance I really had a chance to do an interview with Steve was years ago. He was at Santa Clara and this – and I, I'm, just, I'm watching him on the sideline thinking, well, man, who would have ever thought this underrated small school 
This guy was about to get drafted, gets drafted as the highest Canadian at the time, changes the NBA the way they play the game right now. There might not be a Steph Curry if it wasn't for the way that Steve Nash played the game at the time, you know, pass first, three-point shot, all of those things. And then to see him on the sideline as a coach, and, and, and oh, by, by the way, also become a two-time MVP and a Hall of Famer. Uh, I think he's had a tough job, though, Rod. I think it's, it's not easy. I don't think it's easy to coach uh, superstars. But the best thing for him, him is he's been around it. You know, remember he went to L.A. with that dream team, and he was around Kobe and all of them. And he saw that, you know, you, you might have great players, but you might not win. And so what is that elixir or that potion? I, I like the way he manages the game. But um, it's, it's so cool to see him out there. And, and, and yeah, to, we, we have to have some sort of Maple Leaf rooting interest right now until, uh, you know, the Raptor season begins or we see more Canadians yeah. in well, the NBA final. And, and Nash was with Golden State. He got a ring as, I think he was at a consultant. So I'm sure he learned a little bit there about <laughs> egos and stars, right? I will tell you a quick story about Steve Nash. Um, to tell you how driven this guy is and how much he loves the game. And he, by the way, is a huge, uh, he's a well-read person. He's a, um, a huge historian on, on, a, on Canadian and American history, world history. He's a smart guy. He just didn't go to college to play basketball. He's a smart guy. But uh, to give you an idea of how hard he, he works at a craft is, I go back to, uh, oh man, this is early 90s. I was in Victoria. Uh, he had the key to his high school, St. Michael's, and he said, yeah, I'd love to do this little interview with you, but I'd like to shoot. Uh, I got to I gotta shoot around. Do you mind shagging for me? And I went, shag? What? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> oh, 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 you mean, yeah, get the ball. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I, he had to make 300 three-pointers. Make 300 three-pointers. And, you know, just do the average. He was probably shooting around maybe 38 to 40%. So we were there for a good couple hours. I was sweating much more than Steve was. I just I, at that time as a young kid, I, I saw this this incredible uh, obsession he had with the game and passion and and work ethic, and he's taken it to coaching. Whatever he does, whatever Steve Nash does, yeah. he takes it to the highest highest level. That's why he and for all the kids out there who are watching who play a sport, um, you know, don't be bitter, be better. That was his thing every Watch single him. day. B E yeah. D better every day, and that's Steve Nash. And I. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, hey, if the Brooklyn Nets don't get through, don't think for a moment that they might want to make a coaching change. That's the way the NBA works. But I, <laughs> I have a feeling that Steve could, Steve could be slipping a, a ring on his finger with this team. A wonderful catch-up. Rod, thank you for the time. Yeah. And I look forward to CFL football with you. Oh, buddy, I can't wait. I'll give you a COVID hug. There you go. And, um, <laughs> Thanks, Blackie. Yeah, I'll see you. Hey, it's great that we start out west, so uh, – we will get together for lunch, a coffee. Uh, we'll get oh, yeah. together somehow. You I, need to get I, in here. Wait. I will be there. I'll be. Yeah. I'll bring Dwayne in, but you might have to bring a caterer. <laughs> oh, it's we're good with that. Trust me, we're good with that. Yeah, <laughs> done. All, All right. right. Thanks, Thanks Rod. boys. Have a great Thanks. day. Have a great week. And hey, happy CFL season. There you go. Too far away. <laughs> Thank you, man. Rod Black joining us from Toronto. Just one of the all-time great dudes in sport. We'll be right back with a sports update and full-on viewer takeover. Our poll questions got them going today. You're watching the RP Show. Game Plus TV Network, YouTube, and Facebook Live and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Well, when I first started playing, um, the scholarship was so important to me. Like, the, I was working two jobs. I was working at a gas station, and I used to actually line the field for the team to get paid just to make some extra money. I think for me, um, the opportunities that the scholarships provide is uh, very important, or very specifically the, the stress it alleviates for myself. The Rams give me the opportunity to buy everything that I need to get the best grades that I can and that'll lead to me getting hopefully the best job that I can in the future. There wasn't a scholarship opportunity with the Rams. Um, you know, I know that life would have been a lot more difficult for myself. Um, I'm not too sure exactly how much longer I would have been able to play beyond my first year. With the opportunity that they provided for me to go through school with the financial support and with the opportunity to continue to play football, um, now that I look back on it, it was the most important thing in my life. 
Capital is Regina's trusted GMC Buick Cadillac dealership. Whether you're on the market for a new or certified pre-owned vehicle, we got you covered. And when it's time for service work, you can trust our factory trained technicians who specialize in repairing any maker model. But don't take our word for it. Check out CapitalGMC.ca to see how we roll and to learn what other customers are saying about working with us. Your dealership experience should be fun, easy, and transparent. And that's exactly what you'll get when you choose Capital GMC, Regina's trusted GMC Buick Cadillac dealership. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google Leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's Lifeline. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old, and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rob. Welcome back, everybody. To jump into a sports update here. Clint Frazier snapped an eighth inning tie with a pinch hit double, and the New York Yankees hit three solo homers to beat Toronto 6 5 Tuesday night. Frazier hit a grounder inside the third baseline to score pinch runner Tyler Wade from second as the Yankees completed a comeback from a 5 2 deficit and won for the third time in 10 games. Bo Bichette homered and had a two run single for the Jays. They'll do it again with the Yankees tonight in Buffalo. Nikita Kucherov continues to lead the Stanley Cup playoffs in scoring after adding three helpers in Tampa's 4-2 victory over the Islanders. Game three tomorrow they shift to Long Island. Tonight it's Montreal and Vegas from T-Mobile. Canada is through to the final round of World Cup qualifying action. The Canadians moved on after collecting a solid 3-0 win over Haiti. An otherworldly performance by Kevin Durant has given the Brooklyn Nets the edge in their Eastern Conference semifinals with the Bucks. Durant had 49 points, and Brooklyn beat Milwaukee 114-108 last night, tying up that... No, they took a 3-2 series lead. This sports update for the Tab Brew House and drive through Liquor Store, and for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. So... Rod Black, as we mentioned off the top of the show, was a late ad today. I thought it was just going to be Darren and I for all of our one, which would have been just fine. It would have been great. Black, he crushed it, though, as expected. But I was just saying to Darren, let's just do a back and forth with the viewers. Let's rock it. Let's kick it old school and get them. That's the way we used to do it. For those of you that oh, have yeah. been with us for a long time, you were, it was just us. That's right. That's where that topic of this is the view for sports fans came from. It's like, let's just sit and have coffee and talk. So Perfect. let's do that until the top of the hour with the viewers. Amen. Because the poll is getting a lot of steam. The poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. And I did not expect this to be a thing. For Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, who should be the CFL on TSN's number one play-by-play -play man? Rod Black, Gord Miller, Rod Smith, or Farhan Lalji? And there's a lot more votes on it than we normally get. And you, you or Clark inform me why. The fifth, the fifth man of this, 
Dustin Nielsen in Edmonton has retweeted it. So now all of Edmonton's going nuts saying we want Dustin Nielsen. And so, as I said off the top of the show, don't get mad at me because I didn't put him in the – there's only four options. And I said, I will just say out of seniority, these guys have all been at TSN longer, and I believe they all want the job. But I think the funny thing about this with Gord Miller leading, I don't think Gord wants to do it. I think Gord's happy doing his 10 games a year. Yeah, He's the normal Leafs sends guy. He's a hockey guy. Tells you people really love Gord Miller. That's what that tells me. But if you just tuned in or you weren't watching earlier, Jermaine Franklin said on this show, he wants the job. James Duffy said on this show, he wants that job. That's a highly coveted job. And these are all just TSN people. Let's look outside the building at who might want. It's a highly coveted position. Why are they getting so upset in Edmonton? I get, I get the sense that Dustin Nielsen's upset that he was not in our top four. Well, or his, his supporters, for sure. For sure. And, you know, that's all you can want if you're him, right, is the supporters backing him up. Just like the people calling for your name to be in that, in that running. You know, as we look at outside the box names, obviously, you know, fans in this league think of you very highly. You know, Mark Lee's the second name that we've come up with that's, that's been brought in by our viewers in terms of outside right. the TSN family. You know, it's funny, Dustin, we've t- and him and I have talked about this too. He's got a really interesting opportunity because he's got a really good thing going on in Edmonton. But he's such an Edmonton guy now that does he want to do national and does the country see him that way? Edmonton does, but just Cal- ask Calgary what they think, right? You know, it- it's fun what he's built, but uh, I think the four guys we picked are pretty good. And, you know, look, at there's a ton of people that are capable for this job, right? Jim Mullen's done lots of play-by-play in the past. Now he's the president of Football Canada. Yep. Big supporter. You know, Tim McAuliffe, our friend at, uh, at Sportsnet, he's done tons of play-by-play. Arash has done some play-by-play, and those are all big Canadian football guys. Yep. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot. And then you go down, you know, the female roster, which we haven't even explored yet. You know, Claire Hanna's name's come up. Kate Burness's name has come up. You know, do they are they capable of doing play by play? I don't know. I've never heard them call a game. Um, and then there's countless university sports names that could come up. So it'd be I, I'm sure they've been doing their homework on this for a long time. We did ours in 30 seconds, okay, to come up with with the poll. So I get where that's coming from, but uh, it's fun. And clearly, our viewers in this country is pretty passionate about. Uh, well, who, they just love talking the about person. that. Yeah, they love talking about that. Um, as you can see, I'm having more problems today with my earpiece. I don't know why. Why do you, you don't have any problems like that? No. Because you don't clip it to the back of your shirt. I don't That's clip why. It. I rock the two and uh, pretty good. Yeah, you know what? The thing is, people get really excited about the announcer talk because you feel like you know them. They're in your car, they're in your tractor cab, they're in your home, right? You feel like you know them. Yeah. Rick Reschenthaler writes and he says, I miss Walby's Warriors. Jordan Ewart says Rod and Darren should be lead guys on the call. Well, what's funny about that is I think it's clear. I've said it and have displayed it. I'm not looking for a job in the CFL at all. This is what we want to do. It's what I want to do. I can't speak for you. But it's fun to be able to stand and have a stand outside and have a discussion like this because I don't have a dog in the hunt, as they say. Yeah. Uh, isn't it easier to do it that way? For I don't know. Sure. Maybe you want to be the play-by-play I, guy on TSN. Hey, I look it. If I can say that I want to do it, I want to do it. I would. I would take that job in a heartbeat. Um, I love calling games. Um, I've you know started doing it at the university level and have been doing it at all other levels. But I'm not. I mean, they're not going to look at me for that job yet. I get that. Um, I do like calling games, but it is. This is fun. I mean, we get to spend here, spend our mid mornings talking about. That's the stuff. games. That's <laughs> yeah. fun. And then we can go to the games or watch them on TV as fans, and it's a lot less stressful. That's for sure. Uh, Brian Kozak says Sportsnet uses local announcers for hockey games, and in most cases, their colors show. I'd hope TSN wouldn't do that for football. You, we're going to take a break here right away, but it, you're never going to get away from that. Suter's often told me, you know, anybody that's not a Ryder fan accuses them of being a Ryder fan in the booth, and then Ryder fans accuse them of hating the Ryders. You know, and like Cuthbert says, he wears a blue tie, and everybody thinks he's a bomber fan. You know, like, it's just, stop it. You know, the whole thing with the Leafs. Yeah, I thought there was too much love on Leafs broadcast for Austin Matthews, but that's just me. A lot of people probably didn't feel that way. The networks can't think about that. 
because you're not going to please everybody. From Jen at the Four Seasons, what grinds my gears, the CFL just announced two days ago they're going to play, and I have heard a lot more complaining about the schedule than just being happy we are at least playing. Ugh! Can't fix, stupid. Let's be back. Let's come back for viewer takeover. We're watching the RP show on uh, YouTube and Facebook Live today and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Ultimate Fan Zone, taking our show on the road coast to coast. Shop online, ultimatefanzone.ca. Slick, user-friendly, we built this site for the diehard sports fans. Jerseys, hats, team apparel, offering officially licensed fan gear from the best lines in sports. Nike, New Era, Adidas, Fanatics, game day ready to your door. Now, just a click away, ultimatefanzone.ca. Or check us out on Facebook and Instagram, UFZ Downtown Moose Jaw, home of everything authentic. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade-In Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody. This is, uh, it's been a fun day. They all are, of course, but this is extra fun. Moose with me. We got uh, producer Clark here, director Jordan. And where's the Rocco this week? Have I just not seen him? Oh, right. Oh, so we're not on TV. So he's he only, bails. He's only here when we're on Game Plus, which we're not this week. We're preempted. So I appreciate those watching online, the streaming for the week. 
Troy in Tirana from Sober Athletic Wear writes in. He says, I think John Frenzy secretly retired from the RP show so he could come out of retirement to swoop in and steal the head CFL play-by-play announcer job. How about that? How about you know, that? Of all the topics on the table of this golden corral of sports talk today, bad officiating last night in Tampa, Golden Knights Habs tonight, Blue Jays blow their sixth save in a month. All they want to talk about is the TSN play-by-play job. Oh, I know. Have you noticed? I know. Who are they going to listen to? That's what they want to know. And I'm here for it. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Mandy in Edmonton says, just saw Dave Campbell saying Elks special teams coordinator A.J. Gass leaving for personal reasons. Can't help but notice the timing between not having to coach on the payroll versus coaching on a payroll. I'm too dumb to completely understand what Mandy's saying. She's smarter than me. But can I say this? I talked to a buddy of mine this morning from the L.A. Kings. And I won't say why I was talking to you, but I... He said that he'd been laid off and not brought back during the pandemic. And how do you think that's going over for him? Do you know how many guys and gals there are like that? Oh, yeah. And it's just you people don't understand what it's been like in sports. And I, I'm, I understand the restaurant industry sucked. I understand the movie industry, the concert industry, whatever industries that have sucked in the pandemic. But my, this is mine. So it sucked. And Charleston Hughes here yesterday. We were talking about the pandemic. It's like, ah, physically I'm okay, but mentally it's been, it's been really hard. My split with the riders. And I felt bad because I'm like, you know what, Chucky? I forgot about that. He left the riders. It wasn't nice. He went to the Argos, and we all just moved on with our lives because that's what people do. That's right. I never stopped to think about what Charleston Hughes went through and uprooting his life and moving and all that because nobody cares. It's not easy. Um, on the play-by-play, Tank Abbott watching in Canada is uh, energy capital. He says, I'd had the best two play-by-play guys calling my teams. Vikings with Paul Allen and when Rod was with the Riders. Unreal calls all around. Thank you, Tank. I appreciate that. But you found me here. What the heck? Yeah. No, did you see Robin and yeah, Prince yeah. Albert? You saw that? Uh-oh. He says, hey, Moose, the Raiders are looking for a new play-by-play guy. What happened to Shredden Redden? So Trevor Redden yesterday announced his resignation. What? He's stepping back. Um, he's staying in PA, though, staying with the radio station, but he wants, needs more work-life balance. That's what he Whoa. said. Whoa. You know, more time with, fa- with family, he's with kids friends, nowadays, and those types of things. More work-life balance. So here's the deal. I'll do the Raider games. But you got to get me a helicopter because I got I can't leave till the show's over, right? Every day. But I'll helicopter. Back I know and the forth. feeling when the Rough Riders were in training camp and God's team, the Regina Pats, were in the Memorial Cup in Regina, and training camp was in Saskatoon. Remember me? Say, I need a helicopter. Who? Can I borrow Jerry Jones? He's not using it right now. I. We need a sponsor for a helicopter, and we'll do all the games you want. Yeah, wherever you want. From sober athletic wear. Seriously, I would love to see Matt Devlin do the job. He can announce anything, and I would listen. He's just so good at his job. That's obviously the Raptors play-by-play guy, and he's done CFL games before, but I'm not sh- Who knows if he wants it or not? Andrew Nielsen says, I got terminated from my job in the CFL due to COVID. There's just a lot of people that continue to struggle here right now, and it sucks, and nobody cares. But... I was in a period where I struggled and it sucked and nobody cared. So at the very least, I can help out those that are in that position today. And that's kind of what I was doing with my buddy with the LA Kings. But you don't, you know what I mean? It's just life moves on. That's right. You want to break uh, now, Clark? Can we do that? You, You cool with that? Okay. Next hour, Darren bombing from CFL 360 NHL.com. He's out of Winnipeg. So we'll be talking with him about uh, Bombers and so forth and Murray McCormick of the Regina Leader Post to talk about the green and white. You look like you want to say something. No, you're good. good. Hour two coming up, everybody. No game, game Plus today. YouTube and Facebook coming back after this break. Give me a helicopter. Nah. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed.
Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming at the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Ford Lincoln, we don't just sell vehicles, we buy them too. You know how we always have such a big inventory with an amazing selection? That's because we buy all makes, all models, and all years. We're going to give you the best price every time, and you don't even have to buy from us. All you have to do is visit us online or in store, answer a few questions about your vehicle, and we'll get you a great offer. We'll even cut you a check on the same day. So save yourself the hassles of selling privately and sell it to us, because at Capital Ford Lincoln, we'll buy it. Stars, you're dispatched to a scene call. The patient has multiple traumatic injuries and is unconscious but breathing. This is why I back the Stars Lottery. Stars, we can accept the mission. This is why I'm all in. Have a safe look. The prize is the great. The cause is critical. Stars Lottery. The lottery on a mission. Every ticket is your chance to win over $4.2 million in prizes. Buy yours at starslottery.ca or 1-844-STARS-SK. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. squad now you can join the team with your very own rp show gear head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last it's just like we wear on the show official rp show gear at rodpetersonshop.com right now the vegas golden knights vanquish the montreal canadiens they thrashed them. how about that carrie price went into god mode again but it wasn't enough. They're not good enough. I'm sorry. They're playing the number one team in the National Hockey League. That's the Vegas Golden Knights. Montreal's what, 16th? There is room on the Vegas Golden Knights train. And we're not taking you to the train station. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome, everybody, to Hour 2 of the program. It is what we call the second half kickoff. It's brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace, your home for the Stanley Cup playoffs, and the Seattle Kraken Fan Club. The Four Seasons for all the right reasons, Darren. It's been an interesting day. You never really know how your day is going to go, right? Oh, yeah, you really don't. No, you don't when you jump out of bed? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't. What's Director Jordan doing back there? Who, 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 who fires the quick six horn? Let's hit it again, if you don't mind, the quick six horn. This is what, I, this is what I'd planned to talk about today, and we've hardly talked about any of it. Last night, Tampa Bay beat the New York Islanders 4-2 in a highly controversial, officiated game. And it's funny because Craig Button on TSN telling the teams to get over it because it ended up even at the end of the day, let's move on. And I'm like, that's not going to fix the problem. Uh, point two, Montreal at Vegas tonight. The 
injury-riddled Montreal Canadiens in Vegas tonight. Prediction for a score? 5-2 Vegas. Okay. That's what I'm going with. 5-2 Vegas tonight. Uh, point three, the Blue Jays blow another save. They're sixth in the last 30 days. They lost to the Yankees 6-5. And what a, that fell eight and a half off the division lead with that. A half game back of New York. A lot of CFL stuff was point four. And it should be pointed out, really, for Chris Larson, the Ottawa Red Blacks player who was initially a suspect in an incident of gay bashing, for lack of a better term, on the weekend. He's now been cleared as a suspect. At worst, they said he was a witness. I just think we should get that out there for the kid because can you imagine what he's been oh, yeah. dealing with the last few days since? Yeah. Some Charleston Hughes leftovers from what he said with the Argos. That was fun yesterday with Chucky. Point five, the Western Hockey League to return with full arenas this fall beginning October 1st. And point six is soccer stuff, if any of you people are interested in that. Just ahead of Darren Bombing, uh, from... People are complaining about the CFL schedule, and I'm not having it. I don't, I'm not even, not even going to listen to them. Uh, they're not stupid. They're just complainers. And that's people. And that's why I don't really like talking to people. So Trevor writes from Sherwood Park, the 780, on the Prairie Mobile text line, and you can reach them. Uh, reach us at 306 306- 840-8777. I will go to any CFL game any day at 745, 8 p.m., 10 p.m. Doesn't matter. We've been locked down for too long. It's nice out till 11 in the summer. I don't even like the Eskimos slash Elks and would go to go to football because it's back. How about, how about that? I like it. Listen. How about that? You're welcome, CFL. Getting people into your buildings that don't even like the teams. How? That, that's a trick. That's magic. And then the other one, yep, poll question here for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. Today is who should be the CFL on TSN's number one play-by-play man. That's where we really dropped a bomb. And our four options are Rod Black, Gordon Miller, Rod Smith, Farhan Lalji. And Gordon Miller is leading with 41% of the vote. And I just think it's funny because I don't think he wants it. And then Edmonton's going nuts because they think that we disrespected Dustin Nielsen by not putting him on the poll, who was the last time the CFL played, he was the number three guy on the depth chart. And I'm saying there's only four options. These guys have been there longer. Cool it. So let's talk some Winnipeg sports with Darren Bombing now from CFL 360 and uh, NHL.com. Bomber, how are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you, Rod? Good. Nice to see you. It's been far too long. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. You know, uh, obviously with the news breaking on Monday and then uh, the days leading up to it where everybody was talking about good optimism and the the rumblings around the league that uh, the vote would come out uh, in a positive way, which we did eventually see. I was elated. Like I was on a walk with wifey and, you know, just around the neighborhood and, and my phone started buzzing and I'm like, we're going to play football. Like we're going to play football this summer this fall and we're gonna have a gray cup in december like i was jumping for joy and then suddenly everything kind of sunk in and it's like okay i'm a i'm a football reporter you know i cover u sports and i cover junior football and and the cfl well now you got to get to work like now we gotta like who's the quarterback of the red blacks who's the quarterback (laughs) of the argos i'm confused there was like a free you know i think you guys mentioned that earlier like a free trade between those two teams when when rob black was on so now the work begins. The players are already talking about it. We had a conference call here in Winnipeg with uh, Zach Kolaris, Adam Big Hill, Willie Jefferson, um, Saskatchewan uh, native son, Pat Newfeld, and they're hard at work. They're putting in the physical work. They're putting in the mental work. New offensive coordinator of the Blue Bombers, Buck Pierce, is working with his new quarterback, Zach Kolaris, and uh, it, it kind of breeds a lot of excitement that um, it, it's for real. And you know, like you guys have been doing, so well through all of this over the last 15, 17 months, whatever it's been, um, you know, good on you guys. Now it's time for the rest of us to, to get to work and, and start covering this game in this league that we love so much. Well, How are you? Bomber, we, oh, I'm fine. I'm always fine. But if we weren't doing anything heroic, it was self-preservation to talk about the CFL yeah. for the last, last year every day. But it was great to hear, though, every day. It was great to hear. 
Well, I appreciate that. And hey, the Bombers, my boy Willie sounds like he had a lot to say for himself yesterday. Again, what was he saying? Lapo was scared to play Winnipeg or something? Not shocked that he would say something like that. I miss Willie Jefferson. I miss, you know, craning my neck and lifting my arm to interview him. Six foot six, whatever he is. Um, you know, that personality, he's just one of, of so many. And it's not just the Blue Bombers. Like, it's guys across the league. I list... I, I really miss listening to, you know, your favorite quarterback, Bo Levi Mitchell, and, you know, the, the jabs that he likes to take. Ah, shoot, you know, we gonna, that Texas draw. I miss that. You know, I, I miss hearing uh, from Orlando Steinhauer and uh, the Dickinson brothers. And even I miss hearing from Mike O'Shea on a daily basis. You know, uh, I miss hearing from all of the voices across the league, the reporters, the broadcasters, uh, all of the people that, that chime in. I'm as excited for that as I am for the game itself. Yeah, I'm a media guy. You know, I'm like you, Rod. I'm like, you know, uh, uh, Darren DuPont there as well and producer Clark. I just miss the people. I miss, you know, no no Grey Cup in 2020, no uh, Football Reporters of Canada, Hospitality Suite, no Spirit of Edmonton, no uh, Touchdown Manitoba, no Ryderville, no crazy drums ringing, uh, you know, wherever you go with, with the drum line. I, I miss having those conversations, catching up with people, seeing their faces, feeling that passion that I feel in so many others. And I think that's the treat we're really looking forward to. Um, you know, my good friend, uh, Andrew Hustler patterson of Winnipeg Sports Talk uh, here in, in Manitoba, he was talking yesterday about, you know, this could really be a resurgence of the CFL. If things have been dwindling over the last couple of years in fan interest and that sort of thing, absence makes the heart grow fonder and without football for so long, without Canadian football for so long, without seeing our, you know, favorite players and coaches and uh, friends across the league and, and those voices from coast to coast, I think it could really be a renaissance and a resurgence that this league, uh, I won't say is in desperate need of, I never saw it that way, but it ain't going to hurt. I think it's going to be a really positive thing. When you say that, you're right on all of it. Two things came to mind. One, if we missed it that much, why didn't we play last year? And two, not the greatest marketing strategy, a pandemic. I'm just saying. Like, it's made people fall in love with the game. Is that what it took to get people to love the game again? My God. Uh, by the way, I I'm think it, throw that, that's what it took for people to fall in love with, you know, FaceTiming mom. You know, <laughs> I guess. Uh, going to the park, riding your bike. Spending yeah. time with family, like suddenly it's like, okay, it's Christmas, it's Easter, it's Thanksgiving, it's it's whatever, you know, religious or non-religious holiday that's out there, and you can't spend it with family and friends. You can't go to the pub on Friday night and watch some football on TSN. You can't, you know, you can't have your hockey draft with your 20 buddies in the basement and, and you know, shoot the, shoot the breeze and, and jab each other. I, you miss all of that. Let's get back to it. Get well, vaccinated, whatever you want to do. Let, let's get back to it safely. Speaking of jabs, I just, I subscribed to the Winnipeg Free Press, so I get that email from them, and it was Manitoba's over 70% now with their first shot. They're just, pow, with yep. what they're doing in, in uh, Winnipeg and Manitoba, so congratulations on that. By the way, you mentioned Bo, and Jeff, the Stamps fan, writes, and he says, don't worry, Darren, you'll be hearing plenty of Bo from August to December. That's from the Stamps fan. I don't know why Bo's name keeps coming up today and actually every day here, but can I say this? Some guy wrote me the other day. He DM'd me, and he goes, what, what started the feud between you and Bo Levi Michelle? And I went, I wrote him back. I'm like, Bo Levi Michelle, that's brilliant. I'm going to use that. And he's like, actually, it auto-corrected, but you're welcome to have it. So get ready, Jeff, the Stamps fan. Bo Levi Michelle. Anyways, <laughs> Nelson writes, you don't know what to say to that. Uh, Darren, I like it. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, where the heck? Oh, Nelson, our VP of Sim Events writes in and says, has the hiatus hurt or improved the craving for CFL football in Winnipeg? I guess you kind of answered that, but you were sort of speaking for yourself. What's the vibe you're getting from your buds about the Blue Bombers coming back and defending this championship? Well, as you know, you mentioned off the top there, CFL 360, the new show I have with Bonfire Sports here in, in uh, Winnipeg and with Jeff Hamilton, just that initial uh, reaction of people saying that they're excited for some CFL content. They're excited for some locally produced 
sports content and you know then i you know just send out a couple notes about the schedule or a note about uh, you know a prospect or a receiver that um, you know somebody sends me a note on this guy's a stud people are like can i go to training camp can can i come to the stadium can you know who's who's the starting five receivers who's the weak side line but like the talk is already happening and i'm uh you know a nuts and bolts grassroots you know like the real x's and o's grit of football i like the big storylines i like talking about those things too but i like to know what's going on in the field like i'm almost on the sideline wanting to know what's happening with those conversations between the coaches the strategy all of that so i often have some of those really locked in fans uh asking me those minutia questions that that just those super fans really want to know i'm seeing it beyond that now there's just interest in hey they're the great cup champs even if they weren't people want to know what's going on with the blue bombers they want to know if they can go to a game they want to jam IG field like they want to Mosaic Stadium. Um, I think, yeah, I answered it before. Uh, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I, I think this could really be a, a coming out party for the CFL. I think the hunger is there. Um, I was reading three down. I assume you do too. I'm telling you it is the best source of CFL info. And that, that insiders column that we love so much with the anonymous quotes, and somebody said, one of those anonymous CFL people said that the Bombers don't have enough targets, prime targets for Zach Caleros. And they went out and signed Bryant Mitchell and then he retired. Do they have yeah. enough weapons at the receiver position? I think so. Absolutely. You know, this scouting staff has shown it over and over again. Danny McManus handling that southeastern part of the United States. Ted Gavaya handling a lot of the other areas. Ryan Rigmaiden is now back with the BC Lions where he started his CFL scouting career. Um, but he did a lot of work prior to uh, leaving the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They've done a good job in focusing on receiver because they were finding DBs like Winston Rose as a, you know, a, a pro scouted player with a couple stops in the CFL before he came here to Winnipeg to lead the CFL in interceptions. And now he's with the Cincinnati Bengals. Marcus Sales wins a great cup and then becomes a, a, a Minnesota Viking. Now he's with the BC Lions and signing a three-year contract. They found good players at every position except receiver, but I've seen it over the last, frankly, 24 months prior to that great cup win that, you know, whether it's Mikhail McKay, um, you know, a, a six foot four receiver with time in the XFL and a lot of time in the NFL. Um, you know, Bryant Mitchell, boy, I'm missing what could have been a great uh, one two punch with Darvin Adams there. You know, um, I, I'm confident that they have the receiving talent here. They've done some good Canadian scouting as well, um, you know, with uh, some young players coming in. They're not the most maybe on paper flashy names. Uh, but, uh, you know, suddenly they have a legit passing threat in Zach Kolaris, which they never had before. Um, no knock on Matt Nichols, but he wasn't scaring defenses with his arm. He scared his def defenses with his smarts and with the run game. You add a legit passing threat to Andrew Harris and that physical, violent offensive line. The offensive line uses those words themselves to describe it, and I agree with it. Um, I, I think this Buck Pierce offense is going to be dangerous uh, with what they have. Darren, it ain't Shaq uh, Evans, though. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't well, he's, Shaq Evans. he's pretty good. They tried. Hey, I really appreciate the time, man. Uh, good seeing you. Let's do it again. Football is back. I appreciate it. Enjoy what's left of summer. I guess we're not even really started it technically, I don't think. So uh, enjoy your summer there in Winnipeg. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Rod. Thanks. Darren, Darren Bombing checking in from the Slurpee Capital. And from CFL 360, look it up, and NHL.com. We'll be back. Murray McCormick loaded up and ready to go. It is the RP Show today. No Game Plus TV, but we're live on YouTube and Facebook and 24-hour sports talk for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. 
our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Our parents always taught us about the importance of quality of work and friendly service. And here at Saskarish, we're a family-run business, so it's really important that our customers feel like family. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say, and I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Bronco Plumbing and Heating, proudly serving Regina and surrounding area since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Laid back and kicking it. Let's head back to the studio. Here's Rod. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's episode number 507 of Canada's daytime sports talk show emanating from the bunker out here in Western Canada. A couple things to take care of just before Murray McCormick joins us for a rider update. Not breaking news, but they are very much awake in Winnipeg. Very much awake. Chakona Pauly writes in, watching on YouTube in Winnipeg, he says, the Bombers' O-line is nasty. David Ice says, Dembski will be more of a threat. A Grey Cup repeat is possible. David says, the Blue Bombers' O-line is back. It's the best in the CFL. John Ohm. Ohm. Call it luck or destiny or the Bombers winning in 2019. As a Ryder fan, will it be another 31 years? I hope not for their sake. Uh, Zach will be great until he gets hurt. Hopefully he stays healthy. This is all from Bomber fans. So thanks for tuning in to the Rod Peterson Show from the Manitoba Capitol. But as I said, here in the Saskatchewan Capitol, we bring in Murray McCormick from the Regina Leader Post, who has been a long haul. Hey, Murr, they weren't lying. You look hey, great. Guys. Hey, good to see you. How happy. Thanks. Congratulations. Uh, on what? All right. On your 500 plus shows, way to go, guys! You guys have really kind of stuck around. You've created a real niche for yourself, and way to go! Congrats! That's quite that's quite an accomplishment and quite a milestone. And here's hoping you get to a thousand. Would that yeah. be something? Very nice of you to say that, Murray, and very nice of you to do the feature on my compadre over here, Darren. So we all appreciate yeah. that very much, and I thank you for your help because you've been a great supporter. But for you, I'll say congratulations to you. Happy CFL season, man! How does that feel? Oh, man, I hate to go this way. I thought, what if they said no? 
how I would have felt on Monday morning knowing that was coming down. But I just went, it was a feeling of elation, almost up there with getting my first shot, my first dose of uh, the, the uh, coronavirus vaccine. That was almost as emotional. And finally, there's light at the end of the tunnel and finally things are coming together. And it was it was so exciting. And so I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm a holidaying sports writer doing perhaps the biggest story of the year to the next biggest story of the year. So I've kind of been able to sit back and watch what's going on. But I'm back to work on Monday and I'm so looking forward to just writing stuff about football and who's going to be the weak side linebacker and who's going to be that, the Amer- are they going to go with all American tackles, which are all going to go with So it's, Monday's going to be a great day. And I think it's going to be a long stretch and a lot of good football. And here's, our fingers are crossed and everything works out perfectly for this CFL because you and I have both been around long enough knowing that if things can go wrong, it can happen to the CFL. And I would hate to see something derail what has gone on to be sort of derail this great feeling of optimism that's kind of taken over the country right now. Well, Murray, you're being very humble, of course, and that's you. But it's not like you haven't been writing about the Riders. I very much enjoyed your series of reviving the Riders. And Van Stone's been doing his Thank thing. You. And and maybe before we look backward, le- or, sorry, look forward, let's look backward a little bit to the last 16 months because you very eloquently covered how this team has stayed afloat in the pandemic. Can you tell our viewers, you know, what you wrote about there? Well, I think first thing we got to say congratulations to Craig Reynolds and everybody in the Rider organization. And we don't usually do that in the media. They they put themselves in position to come out of a 16-month non-season with still their emergency fund attack, which means they have a way to start the season with 7.6 million in the bank, which will give credit to the Riders. And that's I think you mentioned so there's people lost jobs during this. People lost their livelihoods. And we, we kind of overlooked that, that. That That's not easy. And I, I know some friends of mine with the Riders who are no longer with them. And it's going to be so different when the season comes back. So kudos to the Riders. And I'm thinking, I had another, I was on walking on the bike path this morning. And this guy mentioned this series. He says, Murray, I have another one of those guys who bought into the three-year MVP plan. And I think it's just a sign of showing our support for the Riders. So the fans have stepped up. Sponsors have stepped up. And now when the, last week when the players signed that memorandum that they were going to agree to whatever that's the season is going to be a season they stepped up. So it's been a come, it's, everything has come together very well. What we have to realize, and I think people are going to, if they, they follow the riders, they're going to lose money this year. I think that's, that's going to be just without a doubt, even with the, getting a 14-game schedule, they're still going to lose money. There's long-term effects from this, and it's not going to be something that's going to be solved just coming back and having a full stadium in the first four or five games of the season. There, there are long-term effects on this, and I still wonder what we're going to, what they're going to be doing in 2022 and beyond, and hopefully they can come through this. But I think under the leadership of Craig Reynolds and the Riders and Randy, even Randy Ambrosi, I think they're going to come through okay. But, boy, there's, there's still a lot of work ahead and so many things to go on with that kind of temper my enthusiasm, which is good because you've got to be, as a sports writer, you got to be a little bit cynical, a lot cynical, and... Uh, but boy, it's, it's good reason to celebrate, but it's also reasons for concern. And I think this series, I think, showed that a lot. How uh, just some people know, I just, particularly, I, I like the piece I did, I like, but uh, on what's the impact on Mosaic Stadium and how they're going to get fans into there when they're still haven't really shown up with the reopen, reopening Mosaic Stadium and what's it going to be like. And it's going to be different. And I don't think we're going to be bringing money to games anymore. I think it's going to be all our credit cards. And I like to say, I've had the same $20 bill, $20 bill in my wallet since the pandemic started. So I don't think money's, cash money is going to be around very often. I don't doubt that for a <laughs> second. Uh, Tacona Powley in Winnipeg writes in and says, congrats, riders, on staying afloat, but it's time to get ready to sink in the banjo bowl. <laughs> so I'm just throwing that in there. One thing I have noticed was the the jubilation of the fans with the announcement on Monday, Murray. That's uh, undeniable. I've got friends. I got a lot of friends in Winnipeg now writing me saying they've booked their hotels for the for the Labor Day Classic and stuff. That's been really nice to see. It has been nice. It's nice to see people happy and talk about the CFL. It was just a good day Monday. I, I golf badly. I hate to say it, but that's the way life goes on. But it was a good day to be a CFL fan, to be a CFL follower. And it's so nice that they, they got their stuff together. But as we still remember, there's still issues to be to be to be worked upon and the people have to sign off on the return of plays and all those kind of things. So hopefully that proceeds rather smoothly. But hey, August 5th is gonna be a great day. August 6th is gonna be amazing at Mosaic Stadium. And I don't care how many fans are in there, it's still gonna be a pretty wild and amazing, amazing area. And I, I expect tears. I expect a lot of tears of people will be just not and not just from something as simple as returning to football, just as simple as life coming back to itself. 
as that light at the end of the tunnel that we've been seeing for so long is finally here. And I think people are going to be emotional, and I, I, I don't blame them. It's going to be a, a big day, big big day all, all the way from through, and hopefully maybe we'll be working until December 12th. That will be something amazing for the riders go to Hamilton for the Great Cup. Did you see what was the announcement from Scott Moe this morning? It's since I've been on the air here, people are going nuts that, the, that he's cleared a full stadium. Is that the deal? Did you see that this morning? That's what he, yeah, basically that's why I just scanned it quickly. Before, yeah, he's going to say that he figures by the August fifth there'll be full full house at Mosaic Stadium, which is, you know, they're still not over the seventy percent threshold, which is, seems pretty optimistic right now. Which is there's only about one percent left, but yeah, he says they're going to be full fans for the stadium. Wouldn't that be something to say for Saskatchewan? But we aren't in a bubble. We're still connected to all the other teams across the league and how they progress. And we got to have someone to play. So if they got to have someone to play, they got to have their their houses in orders too. So hopefully everything comes together and Scott Moe's right. But it's kind of nice to uh, deal with some positivity, isn't it? I think it's fun. It's kind of no, uh, a bad absolutely. thing. Absolutely. By the way, Jeff, the Stampeders fan, is watching in Calgary. He says, I expect tears too when the Stamps come to town, Murray. LOL. I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, Brenda we'll Motes. We'll hey. Excuse me. We'll see them enough three times in a row. That's yeah, I was going to ask. Well, I'll ask you about that. Uh, Brenda yeah. Motes in Saskatoon's watching. She says, I just decided to become a season ticket holder. So excited to go to the games. Uh, from Nelson Hackowitz, he says, no restrictions was basically Moe's announcement. So I guess we're saying no masks, no social distancing. So full stadium, that, that's what would tell me there's no restriction on capacity. I, I have to come clear some transparency. I booked holidays in, in the first week of August, not anticipating that the CFL might be a little bit put off, might not start on time. So unfortunately, those holidays are being unbooked, which is fine. I don't mind doing that, but you know holidays have to be booked and you have to do some sort of certain things. So that I'm looking for a full stadium. Wouldn't that be something? It wouldn't that be just a celebration of that beautiful, that building that sat so empty. It almost has been, was it almost been kind of like a, a stand, a statue to what, you know, that big empty stadium, but why isn't the CFL playing? And now if it can be full on that first game, that'll be such a push for the CFL and, and for the riders bottom line. Now, how they're going to deal with everything. That'll be interesting stories for the next little while. How they're going to distribute tickets. Are you going to, kind of the questions people have asked do you want them handling your food you know like do you want to have to wear a mask do you want to sit beside someone who hasn't been vaccinated you have some special sections so there's all those questions i'm i'm going to say I'm, I'm i've been vaccinated twice now i'm old enough that i've had my second shot so bring it on i'm i'm legal i can do whatever i hope i can do whatever i want and lead a good Bay- life Bailey, the Alouettes fan, Bailey Hines watching, he says i was very unhappy to see the Alouettes won't be coming to regina this year but at least the CFL is back. Um, and I like Bailey. I've known him a long time. I, I'm a fan of his. But I've done, I'm not here to listen to any complaining about the s- schedule at all after 600-plus days without games. What's your take been on the Rough Rider schedule? Hey, we have a schedule. Let's, let's live with that. And I think it's far better than the one they came out with in November. They came out with a schedule just in case to sell. I think it was to sell sponsorships and create some interest among season ticket holders. This is a real schedule, and I think we have it. So does it have some quirks? Yes, of course. Three games in a row against Calgary is going to be interesting. I think that's going to be a, a lot of Calgary. I think six out of their eight, two of their last eight games are on the road. That's really bad. They're six of their last eight, sorry. And that's really going to be an interesting segment because I don't know how, how well they're going to play on the road, what the teams are going to like. Teams are going to be better because the Riders will be, you know, they'll have that much of a season and stuff. But, one thing the riders do is they like having a lot of home games in the summer, and that's what they get in August. Is that gives them a good chance, a good boost to the bottom line, a good boost to the team get on a roll. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, so I they have a schedule. I've looked at some of the things, going, yeah, this is not great, but I just keep saying we have a schedule, we have a season coming up. Let's just look at that and enjoy what those those schedule quirks bring to us when we're writing about in this season, which is going to be so much fun to decide three games in a row against Calgary. That's going to be a crazy schedule, I find. I got uh, my guy Sammy G watching in Orlando. Oh, yeah. He says, nobody has to play the Tampa Bay Bucks, so all the schedules look good to me. <laughs> He's a scout. He's just saying, hey, you got a schedule. Okay. Go play. How hard could it be? Let me ask you this. Uh, Cody Fajardo was on that Zoom call yesterday hosted by the Regina Red Sox because he'll be the guest speaker of their virtu- uh, virtual dinner. Were you on that Zoom or was Van Stone on that Zoom? Did you see what Van Cody... Van Stone was on that. Van Stone yeah, was? I saw what he said. 
No. Um, what do you think is possible for Cody Fajardo and the Green Men in 2021? I knew you were going to ask me that, and I've been looking at the roster and stuff, and I'm thinking, I think they can finish first in the West again. I think there's going to be enough strength on that team. I think Cody Fajardo is the one I'm going to be watching with a lot of interest to see how he responds after having this long break off, and I think I think he can step up. I, I don't see first place, but a lot of things could happen. And I, I like the signing, and I know it's going to – of Gian uh, Lacey the other day. And uh, that's, you know, they're going to, they're, they're questions at linebackers, I think, a little bit. But Larry Dean's a pretty good player in the middle there. So I think, I think they can be in contention all the way through the season. I don't think that's a, a real stretch. <clears throat> I think Cody Fajardo's maybe has to step up and show he, what, he, what he's got. And he knows that too. He had a great first season as a Riders starter. And I think he can build on that, just avoid those uh, uprights at the last minutes of the games. <laughs> Well, listen, you're going to hear this a lot from me if you watch any of my shows. And I, mm-hmm. I got this from my friend Mike Lees, an oil man from Mydale. But I, we were talking about it last night at supper, and I said, uh, hopefully there's no sophomore jinx for Cody Fajardo. And he yeah. said he already had it. His second year as a starter was wiped out. It's over. So <laughs> That's a good point. There's no sophomore like jinx. His second year is gone. Can't get worse than that. Yeah. So uh, I'll get to some of these viewer comments here, Marie. I'll let you go, but I appreciate the time. Thanks for this. I hope we can do it more. And uh, enjoy, enjoy summer here as you get ready for the season. Well, three more days left of summer for me, and then it's back to work or four more days. But th- thanks for having me on, Rod. And once again, congratulations on 500. And Darren, you guys, keep going. Keep it going. It's, you're really helping the sports world. It's, it's fun to listen to, even though I don't agree with you all the time. But. <laughs> we never, you never have. Why start now? Thank <laughs> yeah, you, Murray. Thanks exactly. for all the help. Thank you. Bye-bye. Murray McCormick from the Regina Leader Post joining us. And uh, from some of these viewers, Chris Bird in Toronto says, looks like Ottawa and Winnipeg do not play this season. And they don't. And Willie Jefferson referred to that on his conference call yesterday with the Blue Bomber media. And he was saying, I guess La Police doesn't want to face us. His good friend now running the Ottawa Red Blacks. So, that was uh, the, the, the fun stuff that comes out of the schedule release on Tuesday. We'll be back with more. Moose will be back in here. Sports update and viewer takeover. I gotta, we got to talk about Montreal Vegas tonight. In the fortress, does Canada's team go up 2-0 on the Montreal Canadiens? we got a lot to get to. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show live on YouTube and Facebook today. 24-hour sports talk as well for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Well, when I first started playing, um, the scholarship was so important to me. Like, the, I was working two jobs. I was working at a gas station, and I used to actually line the field for the team to get paid just to make some extra money. I think for me, um, the opportunities that the scholarships provide is uh, very important, or very specifically the, the stress it alleviates for myself. The Rams give me the opportunity to buy everything that I need to get the best grades that I can, and that'll lead to me getting hopefully the best job that I can in the future. There wasn't a scholarship opportunity with the Rams. Um, you know, I know that life would have been a lot more difficult for myself. Um, I'm not too sure exactly how much longer I would have been able to play beyond my first year. With the opportunity that they provided for me to go through school with the financial support and with the opportunity to continue to play football, um, now that I look back on it, it was the most important thing in my life. 